kind of love is an act of resistance. Today I want to talk to you about a thing called Hope Punk. Has anybody heard of Hope Punk? I had never heard the term either. Um, I wasn't too ashamed of that after I found out it's only about five years old. It's a term coined by fantasy author Alexandra Rowland in a 2017 social media post that went viral across many platforms where she wrote, the opposite of grimdark is hope punk. And I suppose for reference, you need to know what grimdark is. Anybody know what grimdark is? We don't know grimdark. Okay, so grimdark is a subgenre of fantasy literature and science fiction literature. Grimdark stories are nihilistic, dystopian, amoral, violent. In grimdark stories, there usually are no heroes, but if there's a protagonist you might come to root for, even they aren't really good people. The mood tends to be cynical, disheartening. Nothing matters and what if it did? We're all stuck in this thing with our human limitations and there's nothing we can do to get out of it. Examples of grimdark you might know. Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, is grimdark. The third body problem is grimdark. Uh, N.K. Jemison, if you know her work, is uh, grimdark. The Sopranos is grimdark. Westworld is grimdark. Penny Dreadful is grimdark. I'm trying to come up with examples you might know. Um, Writer Liz Bork says grimdark is, quote, a retreat into the valorization of darkness for darkness' sake, into a kind of nihilism that portrays right action as either impossible or futile. Grimdark is popular right now. There's a lot of dystopian fiction in novels, in comics, in movies, in graphic novels. It's something that's captured a lot of people because a lot of people, I think, have this sense of foreboding in recent years with all the issues facing humanity. And hope punk is the opposite of grimdark. There's a debate whether these things are actually subgenres or just characteristics of certain stories, but that's another topic for another thing. It's the vibe of hope punk that makes it so important. As punk, hope punk is anti-establishment, resistance to oppression. So there's this sense of resisting oppression and being against the system in hope punk, even though it's a more hopeful look. It's going to take some serious work against the things that are. Alexandra Rowland furthered her explanation of Hope Punk in essays and interviews she gave after that social media posting. And she noted that Hope Punk is a refutation of the glasses half empty, lazy nihilism of grimdark and such works. Hope Punk says, I don't believe that. Go, words the minister won't say yourself. The glass is half full. Yeah, we're all a messy mix of good and bad and flaws and virtues. We've all been mean and petty and cruel. But, and the but is important, but we've also been soft and forgiving and kind. Hope Punk says kindness and softness is not weakness. In that in a world of brutal cynicism and nihilism, being kind is an act of rebellion. You probably are familiar with hope punk stories. The Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, The Hunger Games, The Matrix, The Good Place is hope punk. The Shawshank Redemption is definitely hope punk. 
A couple weeks ago, I was at the Festival of Homiletics in Minneapolis, and among all the awesome preaching, my favorite sermon of the whole week was by a woman named Marianne McKibben Dana, a Presbyterian minister, now retired from the parish, who writes and does clergy coaching. And the title of her sermon was Hope Punk and the Gospel, How to Hope When All Seems Lost. And I had that circled all week, and like, that's the one I'm going to. Because anything with punk in the title is like all me. It's like, I love that hope is Joe Strummer, not like flowery optimism. I'd not heard hope punk. This was a revelation. And I've recently read through Marianne McKibben Dana's book, Hope, A User's Manual. Absolutely fantastic. You'll be hearing more about it, I can assure you. <laughs> and she says that in her case, you know, she thinks the Jesus story is very hope punk, accepts reality as it is, will fight on anyway, even though we may get defeated or seemingly defeated, you've got to put up that fight anyway. That's what you do because you're fighting, as Chopek says, for the future. And by which he didn't mean for heaven. He meant for what comes next, for all the people that may be if we hang in there. And she said, I don't think you're going to get a sense of hope punk out of what's come to be contemporary American Christianity. Probably quite the opposite, but it's certainly there in the story, though there's a lot of aspects of Christianity and a lot of um, denominations and theologies that discount it. So I, I, I appreciated her take on this, and it just wrapped me in. And I think Norbert Chopek is a great example of this idea of hope punk. His story is so hope punk. His wife goes to America. The American service, uh, a Unitarian Service Committee offers to smuggle them out of Nazi-occupied Europe. And uh, he encourages Maja to go, but he stays with the congregation. <coughs> he couldn't conscience leaving his people to that evil. He, he chose to stay with them. That's hope punk. When in the latter days before they shut Unitaria down completely, Sunday services would have rows of Gestapo in the back trying to intimidate him. And he would preach against the Nazis anyway. That's hope punk. That's Joe Strummer telling you London's burning and go to the river, right? That's, that's punk. When the Gestapo came to arrest him, he offered them tea. Are you kidding me? The character you've got to have to have that kind of presence of mind and that courage in that moment to not lower yourself to the evil in the fight they insist on putting on everybody. He treats absolute evil as if its core humanity is still reachable. That's hope punk. That is not giving up no matter what the situation is. And as you saw in the video, he knew he was going to lose. He had no illusions this was going to be a fairy tale. But hope is an act of resistance. And hope is not optimism. Optimism is a wish that things go well. Hope is a state of being in your soul that orients you to what is better, to what is right. In her sermon, Marianne McKibben Dana said to us that one of the things she found most profound recently in terms of hope, and she was studying to write a book at the time, was she saw a statement after one of the killings of black people by police from Austin Channing Brown, a, a black writer. In Austin Channing Brown, she said that for white people, hope is optimism. For black people, hope is duty. It's a commitment to the better future we may not live to see. Martin Luther King's hope punk. Donald Trump is grimdark, in case you're missing the connections. <laughs> Survivors of Dachau told the stories of Chapek teaching them the flower ceremony. 
this Catholic turned Baptist turned Unitarian who had this bizarre concept of atheism and God all together at once, teaching Jews his flower ceremony, for which they use literally blades of grass, clips of straw, pieces of twigs, because they saw in them, he taught them to see in them the life that was there. You gotta have a certain amount of internal some kind of angelic center, you know, to have that kind of courage under that kind of evil. That's so punk. He did what's right because it was right. And we have a commitment to each other and to the community that will be to do that. Hope is an orientation that does not allow us to sink in to whatever might call us to give up. Hope is an internal orientation of the soul, of the human spirit, of something indefinable. It is not perfect, it is not neat, it is not clean. Hope cries, hope wails and mourning and grief and pain and gets up. Hope is familiar with Forrest Gump. Anybody seen Forrest Gump, right? So the scene of Lieutenant Dan and the crow's nest in the middle of the storm getting lightning at him and everything, showing he got, is that the best you got? That's hope punk. You are hanging in there no matter. You are for the duration. You have formed your character to the extent that when it comes down, it will not make you fall. They may take you out, but the generations that come after will tell your story as part of the way we got to the beloved community. Marianne McKibben Dana, in her sermon, she showed us a video clip. I liked her right away, right? She showed a video clip from the Lord of the Rings, which Lord of the Rings fans know as Sam's speech. You Lord of the Rings fans know what I mean when I say Sam's speech. They're trying to destroy the evil ring and Frodo's carrying it. He's about giving up on the mountains of Mordor. And Sam won't let him quit. No way, Mr. Frodo. We are going on. I will carry you if I have to. And he tells him, this is the stuff they write songs about later. That's hope punk. They may get us, but they're going to write a song about this later because it's part of how we're going to win. And having that certainty inside you, that's the orientation of the soul. Hope isn't flowery. Hope doesn't disregard the actual reality you find yourself in that's dark and horrible, or even let you ignore the parts of yourself that aren't so wonderful. It allows you to see the parts of yourself that balance that, that are what's right and kind and accepting. In the middle of what we find ourselves in in our society, kindness, wholesomeness, compassion, they're not just nice things. They are acts of resistance and rebellion. Refusing, refusing to let the evil have its way. And this always happens. It comes and it rolls down the years. Chapek did this, he preached with a Gestapo in the back of the room. Later on, Desmond Tutu in South Africa would be preaching and the security police would come in, surround the church and come stand in the back, trying to intimidate him and everybody else. He was having none of it. He would tell them, we have already won, you should join us. That's whole punk. That guy's awesome. That's our call. That's us. We're the next one. It just keeps going down the line. You don't win. We refuse to let you win. Marianne McKibben Dana says in her book, she says, what hope is, is the stand of Gandalf at the bridge with the Balrog. You shall not pass. That's hope punk. You may take me down, but you are not passing. 
You do not win. You don't go by here. We win. Kind wins. Love wins. That's the 100th anniversary of this flower ceremony. As a Unitarian minister, I have to say, I've been amazed in some of my travels. I go to some places and virtually nobody would bring a flower. Like, does nobody really know this story? This is something like we should do at Hubbard Park next year and invite everyone to come and tell his story. Because that kind of love is an act of resistance. That kind of love is an act of rebellion. That kind of love is who we are asked to be. And sometimes, just sometimes even, we're going to be that good at it. And that one time we are will make up for any time we fail. We don't know who's watching us. We don't know who's getting inspired. We don't know who's getting our example. That one time we can be that punk. We've taken it to the next generation. This is part of the grand scope of what our type of religion can do. Hope is part of who we are. Not a blind optimism, a punk rebellion against any evil that wants to hurt anybody. We're going to be on that side. We're going to take the bridge. We're going to stare down the Gestapo. We're going to use pieces of straw to do right if we have to. I've seen you do it. Sahit New living here in Sanctuary, that's Hope Punk. That's Hope Punk. The booth at the Pride Fest, that's Hope Punk. Whatever's wrong does not win. We will be here, we will be back, we will be back, we will be back, we will be back over and over. And if I go down, there's someone behind me. That's Hope Punk. That's the Flower Festival. That's the communion you become a part of when you do this ceremony. My friends, this is why I love being here with you. This is our work together. We got a lot of good stuff we can do and we've got a legacy behind us, pushing us forward, not letting us give up. We can do hard things. We can sing a hymn without the music and never seen it before. <laughs> do you know how whole punk this was to start and I had to, and I had to save my punchline to later in the service? <laughs> this is what you're capable of. Don't let what's going on in the world drag you down. Cry, scream, get angry pound the pillow, do whatever you need to do. In the moment, we all have this stuff. But it doesn't mean you're not hopeful. It doesn't mean you don't have faith. It doesn't mean you're not optimistic. It means you realize that hope steers where you're going. It's not going to make everything all better and get away all pain and keep everything bad from you. It's not a fairy tale. Hope is real for real people who are willing to do the real human living it requires to make sure love wins. And I'm here with you because I believe in my heart you have what it takes to do that. And I want to journey with you. So a hundred years from now, they're telling our story. It seems almost serendipitous that history brings pride to the month of June because the people who instigated and orchestrated while in progress Stonewall, they are hope punk. So I love that that lines up with Norbert Chopek's story because it's just yet another continuation of the attitude of where love takes us. May love take all of us together into a great future.
Thanks a lot for watching this video. It would help me out a great deal if you liked the video to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share this video with others, maybe ring that notification bell so you can be informed when we put out other videos like this. Check out my website and blog at TonyLorenzen.com for even more resources that will open your mind, touch your heart, and inspire your spirit.